There are hands caressing me, shouts of ecstasy, like a thousand quiet cymbals breaking the silence. And I scream, my voice joining the chorus of a million other women feeling this same feeling, feeling like this moment will last a lifetime, because it does. And oh God, those hands cause me to pause. I've heard that when you take a lover, what's mine is yours, but his hands will never be mine. Neither will mine. Can I call them that? I remember when the promise of a sparkling city drove the dust of a childhood hometown out of my eyes and my future was clean, bright, until the day I arrived and met it. See, they told me in the city I'd find a wonderful job with money falling from the sky. I could send it home to parents who needed food more than they needed one more daughter. At first, the work was torture because I refused to cave electric shocks traveling my body until I gave up, gave up my body. And then I met the men. Some days it's 25 that touch me, fuck me, and some days it's 40. And every day they are old. But I am older with words that begin with nostalgia. Back in my day, life was beautiful. Except back when I was six years old and my present day owners were planning on which little ones to steal, cajole, convince, or simply purchase, life was not beautiful because these rooms were already filled with Nepali girls just like me. Sometimes I wonder what could happen if I owned my own hands, what sort of difference I could make. But I am just another 12-year-old sex slave. These body parts do not belong to me. I do not belong to me. I stop feeling when I realize nobody knows I exist or cares. Why do they study slavery and history when it still exists, when it's not the South of America, it's the entire world? But India is not, and I am just one of millions. Today melds with tomorrow like his hands on my body, caressing each touch more violent than the last. I have tiny hands, but not as small as the seven-year-old who may replace me when disease has stolen my body away from my owners and 30 is the age on the tombstone nobody will erect because it erects itself. He is my tombstone. And can't you understand that when you watch with apathetic eyes each moment your hands lay passively at their sides, you throw more dirt on my grave. And when you make no effort to release me from the cage I am kept in, a literal cage with bars I've learned to breathe through, you are the difference between saving one girl at a time and slaving one girl at a time. But it's not just one girl. It's me. My name is Aisha. I have a name. And it is the only thing that is mine. <laughs>